rosemary, uh, basil, and mint. Okay, so generally herbs are, they can pretty much grow anywhere. They don't need a whole lot of um, fertilization or anything like that if you're growing them outside but the rules are a little bit different for indoors so what we first what I want to first start with is that probably most of you guys are going to be um, buying your herbs uh, potted herbs at you know the local garden center or maybe sprouts or wherever you shop and you're going to have it in a little you know container that has holes in the bottom and whatever that it's only meant to grow in there for a little a little bit of time and then you know the assumption is that you're gonna bring it home and replant it in a, a pot like this like I did so um, that is the thing that you want to be doing and so to plant those up well let's talk about why first so first you're gonna to want to plant up you're gonna take them out of those little cups and everything because if you have ever planted anything like transplanted anything you may have noticed when you took it out of the cup that there was a lot of roots around the bottom of it so that's just called root bound okay and that'll create a situation where your plant won't be able to you know spread out and grow anymore and it might even decline to the point of dying if you don't take care of it so um, basically what you're gonna want to do is plant up and that just means transplanting into the next size pot that you want to put it in all I do when I plant up, like when I um, transplanted these guys, I mixed something like half and half vermiculite and or perlite would work too, and um, potting soil. And if you're going to grow indoors, use an indoor potting soil because those outdoor ones stink really bad. So use an indoor potting soil, half and half, mixed with uh, perlite or vermic vermiculite. And then you can add a couple of um, healthy scoops of... Uh, worm castings. So the perlite or vermiculite is going to hold more water. The potting soil is going to add some structure and the vermiculite and perlite will do that as well. And then the worm castings are going to, they're going to feed your plant for, for a little while. And it's important when you're growing indoors that you're going to want to feed these guys because while they may have low to moderate uh, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus needs, if you're planting them outdoors, there's already some of that inside of your garden area. When you're planting indoors, you're having to add all that stuff into the mix yourself. So we're going to need to fertilize these guys, even though when you plant them outside, if you ever take these guys and plant them outdoors, um, they'll probably be fine out there and they'll probably thrive quite well. Indoors, you're going to want to do some fertilizing, and we're going to talk about that in a little while. Let's talk first about sunlight needs. So basically, basil needs full sun, right? I just can't help but uh, smell the herbs. Basil needs full sun, and so if you live in a hot area, um, like where the sun is like hotter than blazes in the afternoon, you're going to want to put your basil next to a uh, window with the morning sun. That's probably going to be the best place for your basil because it's a soft leaf plant. What you're going to want to do is find a good morning sun window to put these guys in because if, the, if you're living in a hot area like I do where it gets, you know, pretty hot outside. Have you ever done that thing where you put a magnifying glass and you put the sunlight on something and you can like burn something? <laughs> It's kind of like that, or it's kind of like a greenhouse sort of thing where, you know, their dirt will dry out a whole lot if they're experiencing the, the uh, afternoon hotter than blazes sun onto their soil. So I hope that makes sense. But basically, they all need at least six hours of full sun, and morning sun is perfect, okay? The conditions for outside are going to be different, but we're just talking inside right now. So, so watering. Watering is super easy. Basically, what you're going to want to do, if you have a potted plant, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to water around the base of the plant. Don't touch the leaves as best you can, you know, and um, water around there. And then if you have a, a little dish underneath your pot, you're going to wait until you see some water come out the bottom of there. And what might happen, like what happened this morning when I um, fertilized these guys was, they might end up overflowing, so make sure you put a towel underneath when you're watering these guys. So, um, 
basically what you're going to want to do is water until you see some water coming out the bottom and then let them all sit for about 15 minutes and you're going to fertilize this exact same way i'll tell you how to make a fertilizer but watering and fertilizing the the um, method is exactly the same so once they've been sitting for about 15 minutes they've gotten a nice good drink you're just going to go ahead and go over the sink and just pour the rest out because you don't want their feet or their roots to be sitting in water okay because that's some of these plants are okay with that like mint but the others just they won't thrive that way so basically that's what you want to do is make sure to water around the top don't touch the leaves allow the water to pull down at the bottom you know and then after 15 minutes pour it off okay and these guys were kind of droopy this morning so now they're they're looking really nice and that's what you should see actually is if they start looking a little droopy or whatever and you water and you do the 15 minute thing you should see them doing really well after that okay so feeding like I said is the same thing let me show you the fertilizer I use I use um, dr. earth root zone or organic I don't know if you can see that but it's a starter fertilizer and um, usually I use that for seedlings, but you can use uh, something like this if you want to. This one is a 242. Like I said, herbs need low to moderate um, fertilizing, so you know they're not heavy, you know, feeders or anything like that. So this would probably be fine. Um, if you can't find that or you prefer something different, you can use a 444, just an all-purpose. That's totally fine too. Um, and you can use it at full strength if you've got nice plants like this, but you're trying to grow seedlings or they're really small plants or whatever, you might want to, you know, do it at half strength or whatever. But generally speaking, I think an all-purpose will be just fine. When harvesting basil, you can do it a couple different ways. You can just find the big leaves and just pinch them off, just like that, and then use them in a dish, you know. Look at how beautiful these are. Mm, so good so once they start getting big enough for you to use and it doesn't have to be huge like these it can just be you know whatever size you think uh, you like to use them at you can do that or the other thing that you can do is you can actually pinch off you know a whole stem so I'm gonna pinch one off if I can get it oh boy <laughs> okay so you can pinch off whole stems or just you know use a small pair of scissors and do the whole stems and then if you weren't going to use them right away like maybe you're going to use them tonight or something like that you can just um, pull the leaves that aren't so good or that are small and then just stand them in a glass of water and it'll stay nice and hydrated and then you can pick them but I mean if you have the plant inside of your kitchen there's really no reason not to just wait until you're ready to um, to use it to harvest those leaves I just can't think of any reason why but if you're at a friend's house and you're like, hey, can I have some of your basil? You know, just, um, you know, snip off the stems at the bottom and then just put them in some water and then bring them home and then you'll have fresh basil for your dinner, right? Okay, so that is how to harvest basil. Now, what you can do with these leaves now is you can either leave the leaves out to dry or you can um, whirl these up with a little bit of water, you know, and if you have a lot of basil, it works better. But whirl them up with a little bit of water to grind them up and then pour them into some ice trays to make yourself some little, you know, ice cubes, basil ice cubes that you can throw into soup or um, sauces or whatever. You can use it in cooking. You can put it on top of pizza. You can pesto. You can put them in salads just like this. They're delicious. For drying basil leaves, you can either put these, just the singular leaves, onto a plate and just let them air dry like that. That's fine. You can also air dry um, a bunch of stems, like so say that you clipped off like this much and you wanted to you wanted to dry it, you could just tie them together, the stems together, hang them upside down and let them air dry inside of a, um, of a paper bag with some holes in it so there's some airflow, but you won't get dust on it. You could dry it like that or you could dry herbs in a dehydrator from 95 to 115 degrees is fine, the lower the better, but it takes longer that way. You can also dry your mint that way and your rosemary, but with mint and rosemary, you can probably get away with, you know, having a little bit bigger bouquets, but you're going to do it the same way, okay? Harvesting mint 
is also easy. So this one grows a little bit different. What I would do with this was, would be like, maybe I could pull some of the leaves off or whatever. Maybe I'd pull a handful of leaves and, and steep them in some hot water for a nice cup of tea. Or I might go ahead and just take off a few of these, hang them upside down and let them dry. Or, you know, you can also lay them down on a plate as well or use the dehydrator. Okay, so some of the ideas that you can use for, um, for mint, for fresh mint are, like I said, an herbal tea, you know, about a handful of these good smelling leaves, or you can use um, the leaves as garnish and an ingredient in mojitos, or you can also, let's see, what were my other ideas? Oh, that's if you drink alcohol, so that's all I had for that. Um, I'm sure you can do a lot more things with mint. You can chew on them to freshen your breath. Um, you can use them in herbal medicines and things like that. And really, you can use any of these culinary herbs in herbal medicines. But let's go move on to rosemary. So rosemary is sort of a bushy uh, plant with small leaves. See that? Super aromatic, really, really yummy. So basically, when you're going to harvest these, you'll just want to harvest the whole, the whole uh, stem. Put them in a bouquet, and it can be a bigger bouquet, and just hang them upside down. And... I would do the paper bag with the holes for the airflow so that your le the leaves don't fall off once they get dry and everything. And you can use these. You can use whole stems like to roast, you know, a roast and a chicken for those people that do eat meat. But for those of you that don't, um, one of my favorite things to do with rosemary is to toss the, um, the fresh leaves, like pull the fresh leaves off of here. Let me see if I can break one. So pull the fresh leaves off. And then toss them with potatoes and other vegetables in some olive oil or your favorite kind of oil. And then just do a sheet pan of, um, of roasted vegetables. It's so, so good. So good. So all three of these herbs are really, really nice to have in the kitchen. And they're easy to grow. I think that's basically all.